Taurus or Taurus Cross Watcher. This is my third attempt to do your video. Not really attempt. I mean, I have the other ones made. I'm, I guess I'll decide if they need to be posted or if I'm just going to do this one. I'm fighting a bit of heartburn right now out of nowhere, so bear with me. But um, here's what I'm getting. Something to do with magnolias, okay? Whether it's something specific about the tree itself or the flower. But yeah, magnolia. I mean, I could name this whole entire message magnolia, just magnolia. Well, you know, after I started looking up magnolias, because I did, I really got into the magnolia and I was looking it up, finding information on it. I realized there's a movie called Magnolia, just straight magnolia, not, not still magnolias, but just magnolia, which basically says, one random day in the San Fernando Valley, a dying father, a young wife, a male caretaker, a famous lost son, a police officer in love, a boy genius, an ex-boy genius, a game show host, and an estranged daughter will each become part of a dazzling multiplicity of plots, but one story. The film is an epic mosaic of interrelated characters in search of happiness, forgiveness, and meaning in the San Fernando Valley. And I found that really interesting, so I was like, okay. Well then, then, I started looking at the word magnolia. So let's write it here, magnolia. Look at the word. I don't know if everybody does this, but I'm kind of weird. I always see words backwards, like dyslexic. I always, always do. I, I see, I know my whole name backwards. Um, I see it backwards and then I find words inside of the word. Like the other day I did a message for Capricorn and I said demeanor and I was picking up on a man in that one. And I picked up on him being mean, but still being a sweetheart, but having like a mean demeanor because demean is in demeanor, right? Or mean is in demeanor. Did I already say that? I don't know. Sorry, my brain is literally trying to wake up today. But if you look at Magnolia backwards, the word long is in it. Long. This could be like longing. Someone here who's longing for true happiness. True happiness. This could be a person who's already in a relationship, but they're longing to get it back on track. Or they're longing to be out of it and to feel more than they're feeling in their relationship. Whether or not they're admitting this on the outside. This could be someone who's single and they're like, is genuine true love out there? I long to know. Maybe happiness isn't what we've all thought that it is. Someone here is longing for something, whether it's someone longing for a family, someone longing to have their family back, someone longing to fix the family they currently still have, but it's hanging on by a thread at some days. This is a longing to be closer to the mom or the father, a longing to reunite, a longing for money and stability, to be everything for ourselves that maybe we didn't have given to us. Um, I feel somebody's longing here. Could be you, could be another Taurus or Cross Watcher. I long to feel something. What is the meaning of this life? What is the meaning of all these things? Like, the beautiful thing about whoever is longing is the fact that they're longing. They could just be giving completely up on everything, but they're not. This is someone who their heart is still seeking. It hasn't just gotten comfortable and settled into this life. It's still seeking. Now, sometimes when you catch yourself, yourself still seeking, that's a lot of S's. That's my cat. Um, it can make people uncomfortable because, uh, you know, maybe you're not in the right place. So then a change will happen there and people will be cut out of your life, you'll remove yourself from their life, and that will upset people, but it's because you know that something just isn't right. You know, it's just not the one. Well, I, whatever it is, or maybe it is, and we're gonna work on it, we're gonna fix it, we're gonna make it stronger, we're gonna grow together. Longing is the word here, and magnolia is the word. And uh, magnolias also symbolize a lot. They're also kind of like prehistoric and quite medicinal. In fact, a lot of articles that I was looking at Magnolias have great medicinal properties, so it's almost as if someone here is looking for a type of healing while they're on this planet, but I gotta tell you, I don't know if there is such a thing. I mean, it's healing temporarily. Everything here is temporary on this planet, which we can look at it as it's negative, but it's beautiful. Thank God. It's nice when things eventually have an expiry date. Like, 
I'm excited that one day my existence on this planet will end. And until then, I'm just enjoying whatever happens. You know what I'm saying? But if it happened forever and like I never died, that would be awful. I would hate that shit. Can you imagine how bored I would be? I would have experienced everything. <laughs> and then I would never experience anything new. I mean, after several centuries or millennia, multiple millennia, I wouldn't, what am I going to learn? I would know it all. So it's nice when it ends. It's nice when I can have a reset and start over, but, you know. So yeah, it's about healing. Someone here is, you ever seen the movie with Julia Roberts? It's called like Love, oh God, what is it? She travels. I really don't want to click off this, but. So maybe look up the movie or watch the movie unless you've already seen it, Magnolia. Let's see. Um, Julia Roberts movie love eat pray love eat pray love she's on the search to like basically discover herself after a breakup I believe or a divorce and she finds someone and I, I honestly don't remember it but I saw it not long ago but I don't remember it I just remember little parts of it and I love how she just she wanted to keep taking in experiences. She wanted to keep learning. She didn't quit living. She lived more after that. She lived more after the relationship ended. This could be someone who's learning to live again after something's ended. And maybe it ended a while ago already by now. But it's like, no, oh, I'm living again. I want to live. I want to experience things. Yeah, maybe I want to travel. Maybe I want to try new foods. Maybe I want to date new people. Maybe I, you know, but I don't want to settle is what I don't want to do. Someone's on, on a deep journey of discovering themselves spiritually as well. Um, their likes, their dislikes. Who are they outside of relationships with people? Who are they outside of their romantic interests, romantic partners? Who are they? This is someone who is longing to continue discovering like what a beautiful person this is actually a very very beautiful person if this is you i think you're a beautiful person i think that man or woman even doesn't matter i think you're a beautiful person like you're a seeker you're a seeker of knowledge of life emphasis on owls you're a seeker of information and experiences and a higher power. You probably know there is a higher power. Either you're very religious or you're very spiritual now. You know, because everybody believes differently, so I want to be open there. You you do know there's a higher power though. You know that there's certain type of intelligences, like someone here is very open, unless this isn't a Taurus and it's reversed. It's a person watching this video. This is someone who is enjoying the experiences they're having. Maybe they didn't always but had whatever bad thing did happen, not happened, this person wouldn't have been where they are right now. They wouldn't be having these experiences. So they're kind of like thankful that a relationship didn't work out or that they had their heart broken or something. Now, if this is someone who's still in a relationship, I've got to be honest here. This could be someone who maybe they're not verbalizing this, but they think, I wonder what it would be like if I weren't with this person right now or how it would be if this relationship ended. I don't think this is someone who will leave somebody. At this point, I don't feel it, but they definitely think about it. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Maybe they got married really young or something. I don't sense this as a cheater. I just sense this as somebody who is like, I, I don't know my life outside of this person. <laughs> I've always been with them. And uh, I just, I'm curious what life would be like if I hadn't been with them this long or something like that I definitely sense that but it's not for everybody what if I wouldn't have married this person what if it was this person or what if it was no one now you could have someone here who's entirely single and I feel that for the majority entirely single and just longing deep down like happy to be alone happy to have experiences but longing to be in love and experience true genuine romance where it's real and it would be experienced differently at this stage in life because someone's had a lot of experience now. You know, the person they were back in the day when they thought that they loved that person, that it ended really badly. This is a very different person now. 
this is someone who might not have made that decision at this phase in life. They may not have chose that same person. Maybe they would, but maybe they wouldn't. And you could also have somebody here who is madly in love with a person who is like this. The eat, pray, love type person. Carefree, just living kind of like a, a little bit of a free spirit, not little, huge free spirit. Wants to do their own thing, like a bird. You could have someone who's so in love with her or so in love with him and they're longing for her to maybe be ready or to open up something like that this is a very wise individual who has lived a lot of life and they've learned this is someone who's learned I don't see this as someone who's going to repeat anything they've done before they they learned their lessons if this is you you learned your lessons you could say the hard way that's me yeah much like a lot of things I've done and I don't want to learn that way anymore but I'm also not cynical I do believe in love I just don't know if it's the same for all of us I don't know if we all came to this planet to experience love the same way I don't know if we all came to this planet to trap what we love not that that's wrong for some people that's right especially if it's consensual if that's what people agree on that's what they agree on but I don't think all of us uh, want to be caged doesn't mean we can't be loyal it doesn't mean we're non-committal you know we would just rather be in love with a key instead of a lock Maybe at one time you liked to be controlled or you liked to be claimed or someone here and then you get to the place where you're like, no. I like being wild and free. I like being like a dandelion just kind of flying every little which way in the wind, wherever the wind takes me, you know. There's so much out there in the world. There's so much world to see. I mentioned this before, I don't know in whose video I mentioned this, but it was, it was a little while back now, maybe a couple of months, about the bridge where the lovers go. I forget what country it's in, but the lovers go and they'll put a lock on the bridge. I'm sure you guys have heard of it. If not, you should Google it. The bridge where people go and they'll buy a lock, put the lock on the bridge, and then they'll throw the key into the water as if to symbolize kind of like we're never going to leave each other, we're always going to be together. But... There have been certain philosophers that have kind of gotten people to ask the question, what if we weren't the lock though? What if instead we were the key and threw the lock in the water? Can't we love like that? Can't we love the same person just like that where we can freely love one another? I don't want to control you. I don't want to hurt you. I don't want to claim you. You're your own person, and one day I'm going to leave you. I'm going to leave you, and I'm going to go to my physical forever home, wherever that is, whether it's in a bunch of little pieces of ash or I'm put into the ground. I mean, I'm going to have to leave you at some point, so I want to enjoy you while I'm here. I just long for beauty, real beauty. I want to know beauty. I want to know real beauty, and beauty isn't just what beauty is made to seem like it is beauty can be a lot of things you guys ever seen a car accident or maybe where someone got into a little fender bender rather and they crash into something let's say the person survives they're totally fine they walk away with no scratch on them or whatever we'll never know that right all we see is the aftermath the after effect of this little fender bender type thing and 
what that is usually is on a beautiful sunny day you'll see the glass from that windshield or whatever broke probably the light or something that glass will be right there on the ground on the side of the road usually on the shoulder of the road you know what I'm talking about when the glass is over there and you're like stay away from the glass but isn't it beautiful it probably didn't feel very beautiful how it got there but we get to see the aftermath and we're like that's beautiful Francisco Goya the art that he would paint was of the actual brutality that was taking place at those times in the world at that time he would paint about it and it was extremely disturbing to people they didn't like to see it they didn't want to see it and um, yet now they're worth so much money because it's beautiful so beauty is really in the eye of the beholder it's like somebody just wanting to experience true beauty here I long to Magnolia I long to experience everything just like if you think about the movie Magnolia I haven't seen the movie Magnolia but when I was reading about it what did it say a bunch of people having different lives but they're all kind of connected aren't we all connected we're all a big Magnolia this and that and this experience and this experience and that experience you know so uh, uh, Andy Andy Warhol he would at one time he had a picture of a um, electric chair and people were at the time they were some liked it but some were like really disturbed by that they were like why would you want a picture of an electric chair why would why would you do that and he's like because it's beautiful that's what I'm talking about here this is beautiful you are beautiful and you're learning to embrace the true beauty in this life even the trauma everything that created you and helped you kind of be what you are right now and who you are right now and if this isn't you this is the person that's on your mind and because of this someone is falling in love with you because that's beautiful there's not a lot of people that are like that now we're all trying to control things or you have fallen in love with someone who is like that because they're free because they're beautiful and they're different A really nice message so yeah maybe you'll start noticing more magnolias in the near future maybe they'll really stand out to you you could see it anywhere pictures maybe one in somebody's yard or you pass one on the street somewhere I mean it could be anywhere you go to Hobby Lobby you see the little fake magnolias it doesn't matter how you see it how it shows up and where you see it whether a tree or the flower form but just know when you see it it's a sign of healing because of the medicinal properties and that you've come a long way. You've experienced a lot of life and you've learned a lot of lessons and now you're being rooted and shaded Or some of you, I don't know, some of you may be about to, like, actually be in love, like, genuinely in love, and it doesn't have to be with a person. It could be, like, you're finally going to realize what it is that you want to do. Um, it could be a person. It could come in the form of anything. But I think it's, like, right here, right now. Right here, right now, there's no other place I'd rather be. Longing. Magnolia. Also, when I look at it, I see Mongolia. <laughs> Can't help it. I see Mongolia because, you know, dyslexia. Mongolia, Magnolia, Long. Mag, Magazine, Magnet, Magnet. Being drawn to, called to, attracted to you. Or things that you are attracted to. It's almost as if someone here is getting a reset on life, like a do-over, start over. And this this portion of their life is not going to be anything like the first portion of their life. And, and it's good, thank God, because we've learned. 
It's almost like being a newborn baby again, but you're starting with a whole bunch of knowledge and as an adult. This is the second portion of someone's life really beginning. So someone could be in their, I would say mid thirties here and above to like, I don't know, honestly, I don't really want to give a time limit on it because people, we're all on different timelines and um, we all kind of have a moment where when we're on a very deep spiritual journey, especially, uh, we have start overs. We have start overs, we have do overs, we have rebirths. And sometimes we can feel behind when that happens. Like we look around us and we feel like everyone else is doing all this. And it's like, well, what happened to us? Why are we, wait, what? I would be married 10 years by now or 20 years by now. How'd I stay with that person? And it worked out. But it's like, at some point we get to where we're happy about it. We're like happy. We're happy. Like we have a different story. We came here for a different story. We're really happy about it. Happy about our setback. All right, guys, thank you for being here with me and I'll talk to you later. Bye.